for when you have a book to promote, you really have to come up with the goods. You have to really dig deep and remember a lot of your stories, you know. Now, it's interesting to note that the British star, Dame Joan Collins, is back with another book. Absolutely. I've lost count of how many memoirs that she had. I remember at school she had a first memoir, I think, called Past Imperfect, and it was a big seller. Joan, though, has continued to write numerous books and indeed been a successful novelist. Now, I've met Joan on many occasions and, of course, can be rather spiky, a little bit like a character, Alexis Carrington Tolby Dexter in the soap opera Dynasty. But you see, Joan's popped back with a couple of stories to help flog the book. One of them in particular is fascinating. The other is just simply perplexing because she's talking about the Me Too movement and the wolves, apparently, of heads of studios in the 1950s and 60s, saying that Marilyn Monroe warned her all about the wolves at 20th Century Fox. It plays very well indeed, you know. There you have Joan claiming that she managed to bat off the advances of these aging studio executives. All very nice, as I'm sure you can imagine. But fast forward a few years, and Joan was quite frankly ready to bear all in a career doldrum when she starred in the 1970s flick, The Stud and the Bitch. Remember that? And then, of course, at the age of 50, peeled off again at the height of her dynasty fame for Playboy. So she really couldn't really be playing the shrinking violet, could she? Of course, she'll say those were on her terms, different times, etc., allegedly. But, of course, it's a story about Cleopatra and, of course, the mega movie that starred, finally, Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. Dame Elizabeth Taylor, no less. What's fascinating about this particular story is Joan recounts that she was offered the role, and in fact there is a screen test online with her and Anthony Quinn. But the true story behind that, and I had this confirmed by a former studio executive out at 20th Century Fox, Richard Zanuck, who is of course the son of Daryl F. Zanuck. Now they tested lots of people for that particular role, and the bottom line was it was something of a Scarlett O'Hara moment, and in fact, Marilyn Monroe kicked off to such a degree that she had a brand new contract based on the fact that Elizabeth Taylor was picking up one million dollars to play the Queen of the Nile. So where did Joan fit in? Well, according to Richard, she was never really a serious contender. She was simply a contract player that they tested out at that time. The moment Elizabeth Taylor showed some slight interest, and more importantly, Revlon, the makeup group, were offering a lot of money to sponsor the makeup and indeed similar brands throughout the movie, they had enough money, they thought at the time, to continue. Then chuck in Rex Harrison as another star name, and now you're really cooking. Of course, I'm not suggesting for one moment that Dame Joan Collins wasn't considered, but for Joan to keep harping on at the fact that she was a serious contender to play the Queen of the Nile, truly is stretching it somewhat. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.